Recording and streaming settings, bit rates, frame rates, they can all be a little confusing, can't they? Well, thankfully XSplit Gamecaster makes it super easy. If you want, it will automatically determine the best settings for you and use those. That's fine. But if you want to fine tune, if you want ultimate control over what your stream looks like, uh, <laughs> that's what this video is for. This is the episode for you. Are you ready to take ultimate control over your live stream, but you're not sure how? The Elgato Stream Deck is the key to unlocking your full potential. With your choice of 6, 15, or 32 keys, all with customizable screens behind them and unlimited possibilities to nest, make folders and pages to control your live stream with scene switching, muting your microphone, activating your Elgato key lights and setting up multi actions to do everything at once. Start your stream, turn on your lights, tweet your stream. You can do anything. You'd be a fool not to have this in your setup. You don't want to be a fool, do you? Check it out via the link below and tell them the stream professor sent you. I'm Evil's Vox, and welcome back to my XSplit Masterclass, sponsored by XSplit. In previous episodes, we covered getting familiar with the overall UI and managing your specific audio and video devices. Remember, all episodes in the course are available in the description down below, so be sure to check that out. If you have any questions, there'll be a playlist link. I've probably already answered them and covered it. If you want to download XSplit for yourself and haven't already, consider using my affiliate link in the description to let them know that I sent you and encourage them to keep supporting free tech education. To access your streaming settings, click the settings cog in the bottom right hand corner of Gamecaster. This should take you directly to the streaming settings page. But if not, click streaming at the top. First, as we covered in the intro episode, make sure you've selected the appropriate streaming platform you wish to stream to and that you're signed in. This should be indicated next to the drop down menu. For example, while signed into Twitch, it says Twitch connected Epos Vox for me. It won't for you. You're not Epos Vox, I hope. By default, this is set to automatic. This is probably fine, but we're here to dig into the details, so not settle for fine. So click that custom button. Do it. It's fine. I promise. What the fuck? Everything is ruined. Just kidding. Ha ha funny. Now we have a lot of options to tinker with. My favorite. First is the ingest server. If you don't feel like tinkering every time you stream, leaving it on best match automatic is fine. XSplit will ping the available ingest servers for your streaming service. This is mostly applicable to Twitch, uh, and then it will choose the correct one based on your connection quality and lowest latency. If your internet connection is inconsistent or you connect through a VPN that changes locations, however, you may want to manually choose a location. Click the drop down menu and give it a moment to populate servers. Then choose one of the servers that says great next to it, ideally with the lowest latency. If you're having trouble staying connected to that one, feel free to change servers. It's possible your internet connection is having routing issues to that server, or it's just busier than usual. If you don't have any great options, choose the one that's best available to you. Next up, it's time to choose your resolution. This is the size of the video that is being sent to your viewers, not just your desktop resolution or the resolution that you might be gaming at. You can choose between 360p and 1440p, but most people should stick around 1080p or 720p. If you're streaming to YouTube and have a very fast internet connection to push 20 megabits per second or more for a stream, 1440p is actually doable, but on Twitch where the max officially supported bitrate is only 6 megabits per second, that's barely enough to make 1080p look good, 1440p is going to be a pixelated mess. I generally recommend people stick to 720p. I have a whole video detailing this, specifically in application to OBS Studio, but it's totally still relevant here as well, it'll be linked in the description. However, it is also common practice to use what's listed as 900p HD plus here, or 1600 by 900. It's a medium between 720p and 1080p. It's also perfectly 16 by 9. I prefer to stick to standard video formats, but the choice is yours. Keep in mind that the higher resolution your video goes, the lower quality image you will get for your given bitrate. Higher resolution makes more sense for slower paced, small detail or text based streams, while lower resolutions makes more sense for fast paced action games. Next up, it's time to choose your encoder. Typically, you will have one of two options. X264, which is a software encoder that runs entirely on your CPU or processor, and a dedicated GPU or graphics card encoder, such as NVIDIA NVENC for NVIDIA GPUs or AMD VCE for those with AMD GPUs or APUs, or QuickSync for those with Intel. 
With XSplit Gamecaster, I'm generally going to recommend that NVIDIA users use the NVENC encoder instead of X264. I'll explain performance reasons in a moment, but generally speaking, especially for those on NVIDIA's newer GPUs, such as the 1650 Super or higher tier, or the RTX 2060 or newer, NVIDIA's NVENC encoder can now match X264 in quality, while adding virtually no performance penalty to your game, nor dropping frames on stream. It's kind of the perfect solution here. AMD users, on the other hand, should experiment and see which encoder performs best to their liking. AMD's GPU encoder, VCE, or AMF, has not been around as long as NVIDIA's and has some serious quality issues at the moment. It still performs very well in most cases, but the quality it achieves usually doesn't keep up with NVIDIA or software X264. I have a plethora of videos cover covering AMD VCE and AMD NVENC and how they differ and what you should choose for which purpose. I have a playlist of those linked in the video description. Let's talk performance though. As a quick summary, GPU encoding will always perform better, both for your stream and for your game, than CPU encoding on modern hardware. This is because modern graphics cards have a dedicated silicon, basically a dedicated chip, or rather part of the main chip, that is dedicated to video encoding. It's an ASIC, if you're familiar with what that is. It's more or less a standalone video encoding processor sitting there waiting for you to use it, sitting there waiting to encode video. It doesn't affect your game performance, and it can usually encode your stream without any dropped frames or lag. This is great, but that accelerated speed has historically come at a trade-off of quality cost. As mentioned, this is more or less a non-issue on modern NVIDIA hardware, but it is still a problem for AMD graphics cards. On the other side is CPU encoding. Your processor is required to do, well, everything on your computer. Running your Spotify or Discord in the background, routing your recordings to your hard drives, processing a lot of the load for the game that you're playing, and running the setup for XSplit as well. So you're only left with so much headroom to add video encoding via X264 on top of all of that. In some cases, some games will require too much resources for X264 to even be viable for some users. Plenty of older PCs will not have a good time encoding with X264 simply due to not having enough power or too few threads, things like that. And in virtually every case, other than the top tier, top end hardware, encoding with X264 will result in a drop in performance for the game that you're playing. This will result in lower frame rates and potentially added input lag or hitching or stuttering on screen, which will be both a bad time for your viewers and for you trying to play a game. Obviously, the impact of this scales with the level of hardware that you have. If you have some awesome Threadripper or X299 Intel chips like I do, X264 won't be a problem. But if performance is a serious problem for you, I wouldn't recommend using X264. So TLDW, for most people, choose the GPU encoder option. Frame rate time. Easy. Choose 30 or 60. 30 FPS is honestly fine for most people, but there's definitely a big gamer stance, and that's with a capital G right now, that it's 60 FPS or bust. But it's usually not that simple. 60 FPS can be undesirable to some people. They just don't like how it looks. Most webcams don't operate at 60 FPS, and those that do are usually faking it in some way. Using a real webcam at 60 FPS also means needing about one and a half stops more light to properly expose your subject, which means more blinding light in your face. Plus, plenty of console games don't even run at 60 FPS, especially on Nintendo Switch. If your game is only running at 30 FPS, you can improve your image quality by dropping your stream to 30, since 60 FPS requires about 1.5 times the bitrate to look the same quality at 30 FPS. 30 FPS is also a lot easier for your system to encode, decreasing the likelihood of dropped frames or having a significant impact on your game's performance. All of that being said, if you're prepared and wanting to stream at 60 FPS, by all means, enable it here. It's great. Next up, it's time to talk about the scary subject of bitrate. People always get real confused when this subject comes up, but I'm going to make it very simple for you, or at least I hope. Your bitrate should not exceed 75 to 80% of the total available upload bandwidth for your internet connection. This includes both audio and video, even though this box is only for just video bitrate in this section. So just subtract 160 kilobits per second for audio for whatever number you come up with. Start by running a speed test on a site like openspeedtest.com or speedtest.net and see what your upload speed is. Usually this is measured in megabits per second. Remember that one megabit is 1000 or 1024 kilobits per second. The actual bitrate box is measured in kilobits. So take 75% of your upload speed that the speed test gives you and not your download speed, your upload speed. And that's the highest bitrate that you should be streaming at. So for a 10 megabit upload speed, 
the highest you should set it to is around 7.5 megabits per second or 7,500 kilobits per second in the box, for example. That being said, also keep your streaming service in mind. YouTube lets you send basically any speed you want to them, up to like 100 megabits per second, which is pretty crazy. But Twitch has a maximum officially supported bitrate of 6 megabits per second. Mixers is 10 megabits per second. So you don't want to exceed those numbers on your given streaming platform, even if your internet speed is capable of it. The reason we choose bitrate this way is because your internet connection generally is not designed to sustain its max speed constantly. And trying to do so may result in dropouts or disconnects or buffering issues for your viewers. Plus, you need to leave headroom for your network for other devices or programs to potentially start using your internet connection unexpectedly. You don't want to recreate my childhood of my mom picking up the house phone and knocking me offline. Hello? Come on! The 90s were a crazy time. There's another option for bitrate here though. By default, the dropdown is set to constant. You can also select adaptive. This chooses whether Gamecaster is always pushing the speed you set, or if it allows the encoder to fluctuate a bit. Constant is the best choice. It will produce the best results overall on most streaming sites. However, if your internet connection sometimes gives problems streaming a constant bitrate, and you don't want to lower your target bitrate, for example, you just sometimes have intermittent bits where it just doesn't stream enough, enabling adaptive will let it adjust on the fly to, com to compensate for occasional chokes and keep things running smoothly. The next option is to add a stream delay. If you want there to be a more significant delay between what's happening in real time and what your viewers see, you can use this. This would be most helpful to prevent the concept of stream sniping, where competitive players watch the stream to find and beat the streamers in a game like a battle royale title, such as PUBG or Fortnite. Otherwise, most streamers want as little a delay as possible, so you can turn this off. Lastly, you have the option to record locally. This is a great option, as it means you can just immediately record an exact copy of your stream VOD every time you live stream without issues, without meaning, you know, needing to remember to hit a button or anything like that. This is probably the best recording option for most streamers, ensuring you have a local copy of the VOD for archiving or editing later. For those looking to use Gamecaster to record videos instead of stream, let's tackle this next. I will say, if you're just tuning into this part from the timecode, that most of what I said about streaming applies here, and I don't want to just repeat myself. Also, the streaming settings already have an option to record and keep an exact copy of your VOD if you stream there, so that may be all you need. If you're wanting to record in a higher quality than you're streaming in, there are some considerations to keep in mind, which I discuss in a video later on in this course playlist. If you want to use the Gamecaster to record, click the recording section of the settings menu. Much like with streaming, you get to choose between automatic recording settings or managing your own custom recording profiles. We're going to, you know, dive into that a little bit. There's also a new option for recordings here, however, called split recordings. When enabled, this allows you to set a file size at which Gamecaster will make a new file every, you know, while it's recording. So every time it hits, say, two gigabytes or four gigabytes, every time it reaches that size, it will make a new recording file. This is useful if you don't want to deal with big, giant, multiple gigabyte files. This really only has two uses that I foresee. Uh, if you plan on copy or uh, copying your recordings to older drives formatted in FAT32 and they can't hold files bigger than four gigabytes, or if you're recording very, very lengthy recordings to the extent that you may fill your target recording drive and you want to reduce the possibility of file corruption and data loss as possible for when you do fill that drive, that way only a chunk of the recording is left unrecorded, whereas you have all of those broken up chunks saved so you don't lose the entire recording. It's an option. Here, you also have a quick link to access your recordings folder. Clicking Custom lets you manually tune the settings of your recording encoder. All of the same steps of the streaming section of this video apply here, aside from bitrate. This is replaced with a quality section here. If you're recording, XSplit doesn't make you fumble with bitrates or anything like that. There's not really a point. It saves you the hassle. You simply choose between standard, high, very high, or ultra quality mode. Each will require more bitrate, you know, moving up the ladder, and in some cases, a little bit more processing power to record. The default standard is fine for those who aren't nitpicky and just, you know, want to share clips on social media. Ultra is for those obsessed with absurd quality who are upscaling to 4K, which is something I recommend for YouTube videos, and I can make a whole separate video about that. Keep in mind, since this is recording locally, your internet speed is not a factor in what you choose here. However, if you are recording on a laptop or a computer with a really old spinning hard drive, 
there is always the possibility that your record drive won't be able to keep up with the higher quality record modes. Also keep in mind, the higher quality mode you go, the bigger your final file size will be. So if file sizes are a concern for you, you don't want to just jump straight up to Ultra and then be freaked out by a 20 gigabyte recording when you're done, or something like that. Next, you have the option to enable multi-track audio recording. This saves your game sound and your microphone sound so that you can balance them later in editing. If you're not worried about doing this, turn it off. It will make your life easier. If you do want this capability, check it. Just keep in mind that if you upload your recordings directly to YouTube or social media, they will contain only one of the two audio tracks, probably your game sound, since those websites cannot support multi-track audio. Also, here you can choose where your recordings go. Click Change and change the folder if desired. The rest of the recording settings should be filled in based on my advice during the streaming section. And that's it. For a basic streaming or recording scenario, you're now set up and equipped to get streaming with XSplit Gamecaster. Get out there and have some fun. Hit the like button and subscribe for more tech education. Be sure to check the playlist link in the description below for more of the XSplit Masterclass. I'm Evil's Vox, and I'll see you next time.